hello how is everybody doing i've gotten some awesome comments about my conflict um i'm still you know i'm, I'm taking it all in i'm taking it all in and everything that people have reiterated to me is what i already believe i just you know i just think it's going to be one of those mystery things we'll find out later um but yeah and i'm not saying like i said it just because something doesn't happen and I pray for it doesn't mean that I don't have faith. I'm just trying to figure out how to pray, <laughs> I guess. I guess praying the right way, praying for the right things. I don't know. Praying that I just, I, I think I've come to the conclusion that instead of, instead of praying and believing for something, it's more that I need to pray that God will open my eyes to what his will is and just that I would be accepting for what his will is, I think. Um, maybe that's it. Um, but I do also believe that if there is something you want, we're supposed to ask innocently and like children. And, you know, and if it's God's will, it'll happen. If it's not God's will, you know, he's going to answer it in his own way. So I'm still, <laughs> I'm still kind of trying to figure things out. Um, anyways, okay, let's open in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for being with us today. Thank you for the breath that you give us through this life, Lord. And thank you for letting us have time to be able to come to your word, Lord, and partake in what you have to offer to us, God. Please help us to just get everything in that you're wanting us to hear, Lord. I just ask that, that you help us focus and hone in, Lord, on your word and, and on your voice, Lord when you speak to us through your word today, as we read it together, Lord, and that you just put on our hearts what we're supposed to hear, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for everybody who's watching and who's fellowshiped with me through um, conversation, either on the phone, in person, or in the comments, Lord. I thank you for each and every one of them, Lord, because they're helping me grow in my relationship with you, Lord, and they're helping me grow in fellowship, God. And I thank you for putting these people in my life, oh Lord. Please help us to, like I said, just focus in on your word, Lord, and help us to not have any distractions bother us. Please help us to just be able to take it all in, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, so we are on Matthew 21, and I am reading from the message. Um, I don't know I don't know if she commented on my Facebook or if she commented on my comments, um, but there was somebody who said, that they're kind of listening, but they don't really like the message because it's not, you know, really God's words. And that's kind of why I'm doing both. But and like I said, this is um, like, I'm not trying to offend anybody and I'm not saying this is the end all. This is what it, what I believe in, da, da, da. but I just am trying to get a different take on things. And like I said, I like the storytelling aspect of it. Um, but that's why I'm reading the other also. I also liked how Danielle pointed out to read it in Mark. And I almost thought like, maybe I should be reading all the gospels simultaneously. Like that would be cool. Like to just see everybody's um, like out outlook or um, everybody's um, perspective on the different things that happened that, you know, um, the, the three gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In hindsight, that would have been cool. But um, since I'm like, almost through Matthew. I kind of don't want to jump into that, but maybe if someone could tell me, you know, like I said, I'm, this is my journey. This is my first journey, um, on my own and actually like reading through, um, the gospel and reading through chapter by chapter. Um, so do Luke and John and Mark, sorry, <laughs> see, I, don't even can't even talk by the top of my head. I have to say them out. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Do Mark, Luke, and John all have the same stories? Like, like when I finish Matthew, is that something that we should do? Maybe like go into Luke and then read the first stories, and then that'll be the first stories in um, Mark and John. You know, like somebody help me out. Give me some guidance, please. If not, I just don't want to fumble around, you know, but I think it would be really cool to be able to read, you know, like I said, like everybody's um, perspective on the different things that happen um, and maybe even touch back on Matthew and a couple things, or maybe I can actually remember, maybe I can actually remember 
what I read in some of the stories of Matthew, which I'm sure if I start reading them in the other chapters in the other books that I'm sure it'll, you know, ring a bell and I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that happened and da da da. And, and if we have to, you know, if I have to turn back and, and look in Matthew again, I absolutely will. But um, it, that would be interesting. So let me know if anybody thinks that's a good idea. If anybody has done that, um, or if you have tried to do it and it didn't work, then let me know. Thank you. Okay. So here we go. Matthew 21 um, and the message. When they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethphage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, say, the master needs them. He will send them with you. This is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophet. Tell Zion's daughter, look, your king's on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey, on a colt, full of pack, full of a pack animal. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and colt out, laid some of their clothes on them, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Oh, I think it was Palm Sunday. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, all of them calling out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in God's name, Hosanna in, high, in highest heaven. As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken, un, unnerved. People were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? The parade crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus went straight to the temple and threw out everyone who had set up shop, buying and selling. He kicked over the tables of loan sharks and the stalls of dove merchants. He quoted text, my house was designated a house of prayer. You have made it a hangout for thieves. Now there was room for the blind and crippled to get in. They came to Jesus and he healed them. When the religious leaders saw the outrageous things he was doing and heard all the children running and shouting through the temple, Hosanna to David's son, they were up in arms and took him to, to task. Do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus said, yes, I hear them. And haven't you read in God's word from the mouths of children and babies, I'll furnish a place of praise? Fed up, Jesus spun around and left the city of Bethany, where he spent the night. Left the city for Bethany, where he spent the night. Early the next morning, Jesus was returning to the city. He was hungry. Seeing a, lot, a long fig, fig tree alongside the road, he approached it, anticipating for breakfast of figs. When he got to the tree, there was nothing but fig leaves. He said, no more figs from this tree ever? Oh, he didn't ask. He said, no more figs from this tree ever. The fig tree withered on the spot. A dry stick. And he was mad. There was He was hungry and there was no figs. And he said, you're not going to give me any figs? Fine. Then you're not going to give anybody any figs. Wow. The disciples saw what happened. They rubbed their eyes saying, did we really see this? A leafy tree one minute, a dry stick the next? But Jesus was a matter of fact. Yes. And if you embrace this kingdom life and don't doubt God, you'll not only do minor feats like I did to the fig tree, but also triumph over huge obstacles. This mountain, for instance, you'll tell, go jump in the lake and it will jump. Absolutely everything ranging from small to large as you make it a part of your believing prayer gets included. You lay hold of God. Then he was back in the temple teaching. The high priests and leaders of the people came up and demanded, Show us your credentials. Who authorized you to teach here? Jesus responded, First, let me ask you a question. You answer my question and I'll answer yours. About the baptism of John? Who authorized it, heaven or humans? 
They were on the spot and knew it. They pulled back into a huddle and whispered, If we say heaven, he'll ask us why we didn't believe him. If we say humans, we're up against it with the people because they all hold John up as a prophet. They decided to concede that round to Jesus. We don't know, they answered. Jesus said, Then neither will I answer your question. (laughs) Tell me what you think of this story. A man had two sons. He went up to the first son. He went up to the first and said, Son, go out for the day and work in the vineyard. The son answered, I don't want to. Later on, he thought better of it and went. The father gave the same command to the second son. He answered, Sure, be glad to. But he never went. Which of the two sons did what the father asked? They said, the first. Jesus said, yes. And I tell you that crooks and whores are going to precede you wow, into, God, into God's kingdom. John came to you, showing you the right road. You turned up your nose at him, but the crooks and whores believed him. Even when you saw their changed lives, you didn't care enough to change and believe him. Here's another story. Listen closely. There once was a man, there was, there was once a man, a wealthy farmer, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it, dug a wine press, put up a watchtower, then turned it over to the farmhands and went off on a trip. When it was time to harvest the grapes, he sent his servants back to collect his profits. The farmhands grabbed the first servant and beat him up. The next one they murdered. They threw stones at the third, but he got away. The owner tried again, sending more servants. They got the same treatment. The owner was at the end of his rope. He decided to send his son. Surely, he thought, they will respect my son. But when the farm hands saw the son arrive, they rubbed their hands in greed. This is the heir. Let's kill him and have it all for ourselves. They grabbed him, threw him out, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard arrives home from his trip, what do you think he will do to the farmhands? He'll kill them, a rotten bunch of, a rotten bunch, and good riddance, they answered. Then he'll assign a vineyard to farmhands who will hand over the profit when it's time. Jesus said, right, and you can read it for yourselves in your Bibles. The stone the masons threw out is now the cornerstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes. We can hardly believe it. This is the way it was with you. God's kingdom will be taken back from you and handed over to a people who will live out a kingdom life. Whoever stumbles on this stone gets shattered. Whoever the stone falls on gets smashed. When the religious leaders heard this story, they knew it was aimed at them. They wanted to arrest Jesus and put him in jail, but in Intimidated by public opinion, they held back. Most people held him to be a prophet of God. All right, let me read this in the NIV because this is a good good chapter. Let me see how it reads in the NIV. All righty, so Matthew chapter 21. We're going to the NIV. We're going to start back at verse 1, and then maybe it'll tell us um, where these prophecies are also. Okay. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. No. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Zek. It says Zek in my notes. What is Zek? It's short for something, but it can't be Zechariah. Is there a book that's Zek? Oh, it's Zechariah? It's not Zechariah? Oh, learn something new every day. Let's see. All right, so Zechariah. What's in Zechariah? See, your king comes to you gentle. Zechariah. 
Oh, this even tells me where it's at. We'll go back to that. Okay. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. A he so my, I also have a note in here that, that reads, a Hebrew expression meaning save, which became an exclamation of praise also in verse 15. Blessed, so that, because no, that was verse eight. Blessed is the Lord who comes in the name of the Lord. And that's from Psalms 118, 25, 26. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Sorry, Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from, Na from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. So that prophecy is in Isaiah 56, 7. And this is Jeremiah 7, 11. These are great notes. Okay. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what the children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise? That is from Psalm 8-2. And he left them and went out to the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly? They asked. Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. That's what I don't understand. <sighs> okay. Any more? Any more insight this time? I mean, you guys are reading this with me. And a lot of people are saying, you know, whatever you pray for isn't going to be answered if it's not God's will, which I, I understand. But it's saying that if you, this, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Okay. Whatever you ask for in prayer. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. You will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. If you believe. You will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And I gotta, maybe I'll keep, maybe something will clarify this with for me. 
Maybe when I read different books, I don't know. And I, I, I'm not, not having faith in God. I'm not losing faith in God. I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm just trying to, I don't know. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? They asked. And who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Then he said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what the father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this and did not repent and believe him. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus replied to them, Have you never read in the scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Psalm 118. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him. But they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. All right, let's look these up. All right, let's see. Where is. Let me get up in my Bible because I can use my index. So we're looking for Zechariah 9 9. And I like that my table of contents is alphabetical order. Zechariah is at the end. It's a 985. Oh, is that the last book of the Old Testament? And I'm looking for 999. Nine. Almost there. Sorry. Almost there. Nine, nine. 
Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. They said it. Years and years before. And there he goes to do it. I wonder how much delight Jesus took in being able to fulfill the prophecy. Like, I wonder if when he was in heaven before, he saw the things come to pass before. And they were talking about when he was coming, that he was going to come, that there was going to be a Messiah. And I wonder if he tried to, like, check every box. Remember, this person said this. I got to do this. This person said this. I got to do this. Interesting. All right. Isaiah 56. I can't even remember anything. 56, 7, I think. Isaiah, Isaiah, 56. Isaiah, and one. 55, one more. 56, 7. These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. The burnt offerings and sacrifice will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called the house of prayer for all nations. I thought I was going to say something about them turning it into something else, but maybe that's somewhere else. All right, now Jeremiah 7, 11. I don't know why that sounds familiar. Jeremiah 7, 11. What is that verse? Let's see. Where is Jeremiah? In the, in the, where is, have we looked in Jeremiah before for prophecies? Jeremiah 7, 79. Maybe it just sounds familiar because it's 7, 11. Jeremiah and seven eleven. Jeremiah seven. Jeremiah seven eleven. Has this house which bears my name, oh here it is, become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Okay, and now I have to read this whole chapter because I can't just pull that verse out. Because it's like in the middle of this. Um, actually, so let me start, well, I'm just going to start from the beginning of, of chapter seven. So this is Jeremiah chapter seven, and I'm reading out of the new international version. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who came through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord almighty, the God of Israel says. Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the alien, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your forefathers forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal, Baal and follow other gods you have not known? And then come to stand before me in this house, which bears my name and say, we are safe, safe to do all these detestable things. Has the house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Go now to the place of Shiloh, where I first made a dwelling for my name and see what I did to do what I did to it. because. The wickedness of my people Israel. 
While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to Shiloh, I will now do to the house that bears my name, the temple you trusted, the place I gave you and your fathers. I will thrust you from my presence, just as I did all your brothers, the people of Ephraim. So do not pray for this people, nor offer any plea or petition for them. I wonder, hmm, where is Jeremiah? What, uh, who's he talking to? What did they do? The Bible's so interesting. <laughs> so much to discover. So much to learn. <coughs> All right, let's check out Psalms 8.2. Psalms. Psalms. I don't know my Bible. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back to my index. Psalms 572. 572. And what did I say? It was Psalms 8.2. Psalms. From the lips of children and infants, you have adorned praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. There's a little note in here that says, Children's power and Almighty God needs no great powers to back him. He shuts up his enemies through little children and their spontaneous praise. That is exactly what happened. In Jesus' time, in Matthew twenty-one sixteen, and that's what we just read. Let's see, Psalm one eighteen, verse twenty-two. Psalm one sixteen. Psalm one eighteen, verse twenty-two. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All the prophecy, that's so cool. All right. Well, y'all know what I got out of this. <laughs> or where I'm still trying to figure things out in this. Um, so that was fun. And I can't wait to read more. And read in different and read in different books too to see what's going on um yeah. so leave any comments that you have any more touching on faith and and um that verse i wrote it at matthew 21 22 matthew tw chapter 21 verse 22 <laughs> um, I read it in the NIV, right? What, how did it come in NIV? Because I think I, I read it and I think I stopped, but I just, my brain doesn't always remember things very well. So I want to read it one more time just to finish things off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what it says. If you believe you will receive whatever you ask for a prayer. Let me check a different version. How about... How about the New King James? Because some people say, I only read the King James. Okay, so let's check what this says. And he said to them, oh no, that's not the right version. 22. 24, 25. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. What other versions can I look up? Let's see. All right. I don't know, guys. If anybody's got anything else, help me out. Well, like I said, I'm not, it's not that I'm losing faith. It's not that I don't have faith. I'm just 
trying to figure out how this all works. I mean, obviously, I don't know, and we're never going to know how everything works because it's God. And God has his own understanding that our feeble minds cannot understand. But am I supposed to want something and ask for it and believe it and believe it's going to happen? Like, is that where my faith is supposed to be? Or is my faith, am I not supposed to ask for things? Am I just supposed to say, whatever your will is. But then, but he says to ask what we want and to believe for it. Anyways, let me uh, close in prayer. Lord, thank you for being with us today. And thank you for, I think you're just fanning my flame. I think you're just trying to keep me, you know, I think you're just trying to keep me hooked in. And uh, that's cool. All right. That's cool. Whatever you want to do, you know. And like I said, maybe I'm going to find more out. Maybe you're going to reveal more to me. Um, and this is just, you know, reaching up to that climate. Um, but thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this time that you've given us uh, to, to give to you, to give back to you, Lord. And uh, I just like to set, to send a blessing over everyone that that's watches, that's watching this video right now and everybody that, that watches the videos and anybody that may comment, Lord, just send a special blessing over them, Lord, that Especially, I mean, not especially the ones that comment, but I just appreciate, um, appreciate them, Lord. And I just ask that you're feeding them also, Lord, that, that anything that they may be struggling with, Lord, that, that you're there and that they're finding you but through, through this reading, Lord, and that they are too getting closer to you as am I. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. Alrighty. So. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a good day.